Hey everyone, it is me, TNT, and we're back with a kind of interesting video. We're back to electronics, and this time I'm gonna try to hack my Wii Remote. Now, my goal is to get this working with Rhythm Heaven because if you don't know, it's a really simple game, it just uses A and B, and it's all about timing, which means that a computer should hopefully be good at it. Now, I'm not exactly sure how I wanna do this yet. Um, so I think the first step would be to actually rip this thing open and see what's inside. Uh, see if we can solder something that can connect the two wires and like, you know, press a button. Uh, or if it's going to be a bit more complicated than that. There's also the idea of sending a Bluetooth signal that matches the Wii Remote signal. But that looks like it would be really, really complicated. So let's take a look inside of this thing. Huh, let's give this a go, why don't we? So we got our Wii Remote. And there are two little screws right there, which was easy enough to take out with just a little screwdriver. The only problem was that it was a triple pointed screw. And it looks like there are two more right here. And I can already feel that the Wii Remote is splitting in two. So hopefully, oh wow, that is exciting. Might want to pry it just a bit. Eh, yeah, I might need a smaller flathead. It might be worth noting that I did no research on any of this, so I'm just kind of going in blind and trying my best. Okay, yeah, does not look like there are any more screws, so I should, in theory, I don't want to break it. There we go. Try to do the same on the other side. There we go. Okay, so we have to be careful here because there's a lot of buttons that are just floating around. Yeah, so this is the piece that was housing these two little buttons right here. Ooh, and that's weird. I can actually feel when you press down it, just like a button. So this is what we're interested in right here though, is this A. And what? This is so interesting. Oh man, I definitely broke this though. Well, not definitely, but probable. And time to grab my father because I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> so we got the rubber piece here. You have the A key on it and it presses down and it presses against that. Mm -hmm. Is that just shorting it together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are just conductive. Oh, I see. This, this is conductive. Yeah, material. that so makes basically sense. It just makes the connection between those two sides. So that should be really easy, right? And then from there, I just double checked that connecting it with the voltmeter actually showed power, which it did. And then I just marked ground with a black Sharpie. The only problem is that we also have this on the other side, which I would like to get to. Right there is what we're looking for, right there. And now that we've found all the buttons, we can finally solder a wire to them, which I'm very bad at. Now putting this together is going to be a bit tricky, and I honestly might have to put on a tutorial because I may have forgotten how this all goes together. But just looking at it, it is somewhat self-explanatory. Ah, you know what? I'm doing this the wrong way, aren't I? Because I believe that this should have everything that can already go into place, and then we can just lay the rubber on top of it. Yeah, this is the way to do it. <laughs> that looks pretty good to me. So it should be as simple as just laying on the rubber now. Oh, wow, our soldering has broken off. At least it happened while all the soldering tools were already out. Hopefully that will hold. All right, that feels pretty good to me. Only problem is getting this back piece on. And I think that feels pretty smooth, which I honestly was not really expecting, um, but I'm quite pleased by. I say we put in some batteries and give this thing a try. I do apologize for the bad mic quality, but let's try. So I'm pretty sure if I touch these two together, then it should open up. Three, two, one. <gasps> Yo! Okay, that's exciting. Um, would B typically work to get back from here? Where is a place that we can test B out on? Okay, so B does work here and it works normally, which is really good, but will it work with the wires? Three, two, one. Oh, that's so exciting. Okay, I'm so sorry for bad quality, but that's really cool. Let it be known, I don't know what I'm doing. So, we have an ESP here, and I've used these a lot in the past. I don't think I've actually shown them on my channel, though. The one time I did my cookie clicker video, I believe I had to switch to an Arduino. And they also run on 3 volts, which is the same as the Wii Remote, so that's quite useful. And I think that it should work well for this, and then the green part is a breadboard. And what that does is the ESP has pins on it, and when they are put into one of these holes, it connects every single one horizontally to that same pin. So if this white wire is ground, then if I put a yellow wire over here, then the yellow wire will also be connected to ground. Now for this to actually work, we're going to be using a MOSFET. Basically it'll act as a switch so that we can connect those two wires together to press A or B whenever we want on command. 
And then of course we'll also need a few resistors for the MOSFET to not burn out. And I'm very bad at electronics, but let's try to figure this out. So right here we have ground on the ESP, and that's going to be important for our remote and also our MOSFET. Now I might want to solder a connection on, but one of these is going to be going in here. And then our MOSFET, I don't actually know which part is ground, I'm sure it says somewhere. And now that I'm thinking about it, I don't even know if this is a FET. Oh, and I should uh, specify FET stands for Field Effect Transistor. So this is basically just a transistor that we're working with. Okay, so I take it back. We're not using a MOSFET. Instead, we're using this, which looks exactly like a MOSFET because it's still a transistor. Um, but hopefully it'll just work better for what we're doing because that MOSFET was a little bit weird. And after looking at a diagram, it looks like this is the collector, this is the base, and this is the emitter. So the collector is what um, will be connected to ground, the base is actually going to be the control, and then the emitter is what's going to be going to the remote. And with my dad's absolutely humongous kit of resistors, I found what I think should work, which is a 4.7k ohm resistor. So this should do the trick. And we're just going to connect that to our control pin, and from there we're just going to go to the base pin of our transistor, and then we're just going to hook up the ground to the emitter pin on the transistor too. And now that we have that, I also soldered on a few um, pins to our Wii Remote wires. It's not the best soldering job because I'm very new at to soldering, but it'll get the job done. And I could easily be mistaken here, but from my understanding of how this works, we need to connect the remote to ground. And although we do have two ground wires for the remote, uh, we only need one because they lead to the same place. And then from there, I believe we can take the power wire from the remote and connect it to our transistor. And after doing that, our Wii remote is flashing. At least it was. Oh, there it goes. Um, so I don't know why it's doing that, but I'm just gonna go along with it. Man, I hate corrupted video files, but basically I got the Arduino all set up and I'll run through how I did it once again. So first I set this all up for ESP, which, I mean, not really important. And you'll see why it's not important in just a minute. Um, so we're just gonna set this up like any other Arduino, so we'll go pin mode. And then just set this to whichever pin that you use. Uh, I think mine is two, and we'll set it to input for now. Uh, and then I also would like to set the serial output, I think it's called? Looks like the line is serial.begin. And we'll set this to what I believe is 9600. And this is all in the setup, but I'm pretty sure if we go into this void loop now, this is where we're actually able to call it for uh, the button to be pressed. And to do that, we just have to write to the digital output to bring it high, and that will trigger the transistor. Uh, digital write, and we'll set this to pin 2 and we'll set it to be high. And that means our button will be pressed as long as our transistor is hooked up to pin 2. Uh, but then we can also add a weight uh, called a delay in Arduino, and we'll set this to 2 seconds. Keep in mind that these are set in milliseconds. So this is 2000 milliseconds, or 2 seconds. And then we can bring this to being low again, and this is a repeat, so it's just going to run this again, uh, which means that we'll add another delay here. And to add more, all that we need to do is add more pin modes, but I'm pretty sure at this point in time I only have the 8K hooked up anyways. So it turns out whenever I try to program the ESP with Arduino, I get an error. Not this error, this was just me being stupid. Um, so enter the Arduino Uno that I found randomly in my drawer. Um, I didn't want to use this at first because it is 5 volts, um, and the Wii Remote actually runs on 3.3. But at this point, I think it's just my best shot, so I'm going to switch over to this and hopefully it should still work. And now with our Arduino Uno in place, it does program correctly, but I do have to re-put in the transistor and see if it works. And I think with this setup, it's actually working um, because it's blinking every three seconds, which is me pressing the A button and it trying to connect to the Wii. Um, and I'm pretty ex- wait, is that more than three seconds? I say we hook up the Wii and see if it works. And now it registers that it is connected, and it should still be pressing the A button, so let's test it out. And after a quick switch, because I was accidentally pressing the B button, I think it might now work. So if we hover over Smash... Hey, I did not do that for the record. Okay, this is exciting. Now the only thing is that I need another transistor and another setup like this for the B button to work. So I think that that will be fine for at least the first level of Rhythm Heaven, but for later levels, we'll definitely need that B. And now I think I'm just gonna try to get through the first level of Rhythm Heaven, and so I'm gonna clean up my code just a little bit. And I'm gonna do that by adding some more functions. Yeah, I did not think this through, because as soon as I launched Rhythm Heaven, it just kept pressing A until it found itself playing this mini game and doing very poorly. I'm not, I'm not doing any of this. It's all the Arduino. So to get all the timings correct, I brought in a perfect playthrough of Hole and Run. 
uh, and I brought it into my editing software so I could see the exact time that each button was pressed and from there I was able to go into Arduino and put those timings in and I mean that's how I started doing this. There's a lot of different methods that I use throughout this project and we'll get to those later. With the correct timing, it works for two hits. So it works for a little bit, but then we start to get off. And then it kind of fixes itself, and then it gets off, and then by the end it's really off. Because of the way that I was doing this through the editor, it wasn't really quite working. Uh, I actually switched to making my brother do the playthrough, and basically what he did is just press the stopwatch every single beat, so I knew the exact timing between each beat, and he's also really good at this game, which helped a lot. Um, and with that, we basically have a perfect run. Okay! Is that superb? Because the beginning part was messed up because the transistor was not plugged in, but I think that's a super- Nah! Frick! The thing about the current setup is that you have to manually start, which means that if you get the first beat wrong, then the whole thing is going to be messed up. That's it. Frick. the last one. Alright, so just to prove my hands are free uh, and something has to be holding the camera, so. Uh, so here's the remote and that's player one, player two can't even play. We got a superb by the way, um, so I, it's just I'm really happy about this whole setup. Uh, the only problem is that we need to get a perfect start and to do that we have to manually press the minus button, so I'm thinking about soldering on new wires so that we can control that button too. And I did end up taking the time to take the remote apart and solder new wires onto it. Um, and those things are tiny and really hard to solder onto, so I had my dad do it, who's a bit more skilled in soldering. And after a long day of work, here is the result. So we do have a lot more on the breadboard because we've hooked up a second transistor for our minus button. We don't have the B button yet, but we don't currently need it for this first level. Um, but this is player one. There's no other controllers in my hands. I have to hold the camera though, so sorry about that. Um, and you can see it's playing the practice. It's just... It's random for this, um, but as soon as I press this restart button, it will skip, that way it knows exactly where it is, and then it'll start playing. A perfect run, and you might be wondering, why is it not perfect perfect though? Um, and that is because this is susceptible to both computer and human error. My brother actually is the best at this game in this family, uh, and he would time it correctly, so all these timings that you see here, they are actually based on a human doing this. 
So if these are slightly off, then you'll see the ball go off just a little bit like it does here and here and here. And then of course, timings can also get slightly, slightly messed up. And if enough errors accumulate, then you can run into issues. But luckily, I, as you just saw, it, it seems to be working and at least we'll get a superb. But this is only the first and easiest level. There's Remix 10 at the end. Oh, also, best part about the setup is if you get a little battery for this, or literally just have like a USB port, um, you can bring this anywhere, which means that I can battle my friends to a, to a rhythm heaven off, if you will, and I can just put that in my backpack. I wouldn't do that, but it's just funny. <laughs> So after adding in the B button, you can see I add just yet another transistor. Um, I actually forgot the resistors in this one, which theoretically should have made it burn out, but it didn't. So anyways, um, I decided to do wubba dubba dubba that's true, or ringside, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and it works, and the timing is always the same, but I didn't get it perfectly. So it's still superb, but there are times where it does mess up. So, we're almost there. The thing is though, this was only to test A and B, so I'm not really too pressed to worry about getting it any better. But it's also only two mistakes, but I think it's time that we move on to Rhythm 10. Also, here's my doggo. Now for you of those who do not know, Remix 10 sucks. It is the hardest and longest remix there is, and it contains every single mini game in the game itself. And it sucks! Um, but I want to do the whole thing and I want to get it perfect. So to do that, instead of just doing it manually where it's, it can have human error, I'm going to look at a perfect run and then I'm just going to see exactly where the timings are and how long I should wait. This is actually the same technique I used for hole in one. I just was sure that something was wrong with it, uh, the first time that I did it because it just seemed way too off. In reality, this just kind of messes up for some reason and I honestly can't tell you why. Uh, so it does work for quite some time, but I end up uh, switching techniques later on. Now this is only progress, we haven't gone terribly far, but as you'll see, it is starting to work out. And that is it for now. And I recorded hours and hours of footage of trying to get all the timings correct, but I won't make you guys sit through all that. Let's just get to the final Remix 10. So after hours and days and weeks of work, did I finally get that perfect score on Remix 10? No, I failed. I know this is probably not the outcome a lot of you guys expected, considering a lot of large YouTubers can do amazing things and just have a ton of time to do so. Unfortunately, that's just not me. I put in a ton of work into this project, but no matter what I tried, whether it was just manually doing the timings, going through an editor and doing it, or just trying to listen to each beat, nothing worked first try and just got super hard. So unfortunately, I decided to give up. But that being said, I would be more than happy to bring this project back. If any of you have perfect timings on Remix 10 that you want me to try, it's easy enough to implement them. 
I think I might ask my brother to give it a try, and if anything happens, I'll update you guys if you're interested. Of course, I knew it would be hard going from the first level of Rhythm Heaven to Remix 10. I just did not realize how difficult it would be to get that perfect. Another problem is that the Arduino wasn't 100% consistent, meaning that it had tiny errors each time it started, so sometimes it'd be slightly late or slightly early. That being said though, I learned a whole lot on this project, and I'm honestly surprised I got this far. Even my dad, who's a genius, didn't actually think that I'd be able to do this. To be fair, when I first started the project, I asked him how I would figure out what Bluetooth signal was sent to the Wii to interpret a press of the remote. Um, soldering and using the Wii Remote itself is of course way, way easier. So of course, once again, this was really, really fun. I hope to actually be doing more stuff like this in the future. Um, of course, I might actually go back to Minecraft. I think my channel might be back for a little bit. That's questionable, we'll figure it out. Uh, but it'd be really cool if I was able to play a game normally with the Wii Remote, but then record those inputs and all the timing so that I could go back with my modified Wii Remote and do the same. Um, whether I'll actually be able to get there is questionable, and right now I'm a little bit tired with messing with Wii remotes and video games and timings, and it's just, it gives me a headache. But I have no regrets, I love this video, and I'm so sorry I was not able to get the ending that everybody wanted to see. But, I hope you guys enjoyed anyways. And before I go, I do want to mention Sticky Piston. Sticky Piston is the Minecraft server hosting company. That's a bit too cringe. Let's do this properly. Let's face it, it's not that hard to find a server hosting company. That being said, over my years of playing on and hosting my own Minecraft servers, I can say confidently that Sticky Piston has been overall the easiest to work with by far. Not only are the servers easy to use and learn, but if you were to get confused on anything, their customer support is one of the best I've ever seen. They're always willing to help and I've come to them with some really stupid requests before. Sticky Piston is also really good for beginners because they have a bunch of pre-made maps that are really easy to set up, such as minigame maps, modded Minecraft, vanilla, anything that you would like. Sticky Piston even has a really close community within their community Discord server, which you can join if you so please. There they host mini games and have a fun time. So if you're interested, please check them out. They've always been amazing and I've been using them for years. So thank you so much for watching.